Hello, my name is Dr. Jane Garner. I am a senior lecturer at the School of Information and Communication Studies at Charles Sturt University in New South Wales, Australia. I am going to be taking you through a presentation that I first delivered at the Australian National and Library Association National Conference in uh, or earlier this year in 2024. I wanted to re-present it and record it to make sure that it reaches a wider audience. So I've called the presentation No Place for the Faint-Hearted, Facing the Reality of Public Library Work. Now I should say at this point that uh, this presentation does come with a number of trigger warnings. That is because I am spending some time sharing stories that I've been told by people who work in public libraries about the traumatic events that have happened to them. So if you stick with this presentation, you'll be hearing things about um, violence, uh, self-harm, suicide and other traumatic events. So um, I will warn you when that's about to happen, but if you want to quit now, then that's absolutely fine. Okay, so where did this all begin? <clears throat> I am partway through a three year study that is looking at how public libraries can work with people experiencing homelessness as well as they can. Uh, as part of that project, the first thing I did was to do a survey of Australian public librarians. And that wasn't just librarians, it's all library workers. And um, I wanted to understand what their experiences were of sharing spaces and working to support people who are coming into our libraries who are experiencing homelessness. And um, one of those questions that I asked was this one, have you ever felt unsafe at work because of the behavior of a library user you think may be experiencing homelessness? And I nearly didn't put this one in because I felt that it, uh, it probably wouldn't be the case. I thought I'd get a whole bunch of no's. No, they're not, they don't make me feel unsafe. It's not a problem. Um, I was very surprised to see about 45% of Australian public library workers have felt unsafe at work because of someone they think may be homeless. Now, I think with I, when I'm looking at these answers, I think it's possible that people answered this just about people who have made them feel unsafe who they think are homeless. And I thought maybe the answer would be even higher, uh, much many more yes answers if they were considering all library users, not just those that they think are homeless. So I thought this is pretty astonishing what's going on here that our public library workforce is feeling so unsafe in their workplace. Potentially half of us have felt unsafe at work because of the behaviour of another person in the library. So I wanted to explore that some more and understand what's going on to get an idea of, of what the reality of public library work is. So I followed up this survey with uh, visits to six libraries across Australia. So it's two city ones, two regional ones and two remote ones. And I sat down with the library staff and I talked to them about lots of different things. But one of the questions I asked them was, have you ever felt unsafe in your workplace? Can you share a story about that? So that's what I'm going to be sharing with you now, is the stories that I've been told. <clears throat> this is the trigger warning section. This is where I'm going to read to you a number of uh, comments that people told me. So these are, you know, word for word comments that library staff told me. Um, this is a page and a little bit. There's quite a few of them and they're not easy to listen to and listening to one after the other is difficult. So if you don't want to hear, then please just skip through to the next slide and um, it, it won't be any worse off. It just might make uh, your experience of this recording a little better. Okay, so these are the stories that I've been told by our public library workers about the sort of events that happen in their workplaces that make them feel unsafe. I'm telling you these because I want to share the reality of public library work so that we can at first acknowledge that there's a problem. Okay, here we go. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so these are all direct quotes. It's scary for us too sometimes. We get the occasional threat or just people talking about some really disturbing things involving murdering children or whatever, but that comes with the territory of being in a public space and working with the public. 
I was doing a story time with babies and afterwards a mother with her baby came up and said, that man over there has been touching himself. He was older, an older white man. I went outside and spoke with the librarians and the systems librarian got onto the CCTV and he had been. He was looking at babies and masturbating. The police came and took him away. That one kind of got to me. I was spat on once in my face in the morning because of my uniform. On a Saturday, I had to deal with a patron who'd been sitting at the computer and something on there had upset him. I heard a bang from the circulation desk and saw it was a computer chair had been pushed over. The gentleman was upset and he made his way through the library, pushing over DVD spinners and tipping furniture over as he was leaving. I said, sir, you can't be doing that. Can I help you? And he called to me. He said something not nice. An elderly gentleman, quite a frail gentleman, was on the ground and there was a man standing over him with his fists raised. I was so shocked that someone was yelling and swearing and physically assaulting someone else in front of me. I tried to respond and stop the violence. One guy came in and smeared shit all over the walls of the toilet and all over the place. I had to clean that up. Every time I go up to deal with something, I get PTSD because you don't know what you're going to walk into. I've got a backlog of shit like that in my mind, library stuff. That's why I'm a bit upset because it's stress that just accumulates and we carry it around and it just gets added to. Nothing gets taken out. Yeah, it's tough. One of our regular patrons was having lunch outside and she came and sat down next to me and just started talking about all of these issues she was having. It was really scary stuff she was talking about. She just wanted someone to kill her. She didn't want to be around anymore. The other day, a woman who we know quite well and we know she self-harms, she came and she had cuts up both her arms and was bleeding onto the carpet. That was pretty tough to look at. They can give you training and so forth. Sure, you get the training on how to de-escalate and all that kind of stuff. But when you're dealing with some psycho screaming in your face to fuck off or whatever, nothing's going to help. I can say it's got worse in the last 10 years. Like when I first started, it just, the incidents just got worse and worse and worse and just increased and increased and increased. Really, I often think if I can get out, I will because... I don't want to deal with that kind of stress anymore. I know it's not good for you. I talked to my doctor about it, but you know, he says, you can put in a work cover claim. And I'm like, yeah, sure, mate. It's more trouble than it's worth. Really, you've got to pretty much change jobs. There's no way out of it. You either put up with it or you get out. So they are the comments that I was that were shared with me. And honestly, I could have chosen many more. I could speak hours re recounting the stories of people who have told me similar stories to that. They are just a representation of what I've been told. And the thing that really struck me is when I was told those stories, I was sitting down one-on-one -on -one with a staff member in their library, um, they would tell me these sort of things and then they would start to cry and then they would say, oh, I'm so sorry, like it was their fault. And they were upset and that was a bad thing that they felt they shouldn't be upset. They felt that it was wrong to show emotion about these things like it was their fault. And uh, that, I think, is a significant problem. So the next thing I did was to move on to see, well, okay, what's been written about this in the scholarly literature? I can't be the only person hearing these stories. Let's find out what people are writing about and doing research about. Um, I did a literature review on Google Scholar and some of the... Um, you know, uh, literature indexes for library studies. And I didn't find very much at all. I found these five articles. Um, so, and they're all uh, published fairly recently. So obviously people are starting to think about it. These papers didn't just come from the US, which is sort of what I expected. I thought, oh, they'll probably all be American because we all hear about these terrible stories about um, what's going on in American public libraries. Um, in fact, these were some from America, but they were also from Sweden and India, which was interesting. Um, 
so yeah obviously people are, are looking into it which is great and I'll be doing that myself as well so then I looked at well, what uh, what are the you know the guidelines and the laws and things that are put in place to protect workers who are put into vulnerable situations and in Australia it's the Work Health and Safety Act from 2011 which is a federal Commonwealth government um, piece of legislation so that covers all library all countries all workplaces in the whole country um, within the act these are the things that a workplace is required to do for their workers so they need to provide a health and safety health safe and healthy work environment for their employees they need to identify and assess risks and health and safety and the other things written down there and I think our workplaces our libraries are actually pretty good at doing that they do try to make the workplace as safe as possible for their staff it's something we recognize is important and it's something we do try and do however the yellow one there to implement control measures to eliminate or minimize the risks that we face that is really hard to do for libraries more so than a lot of professions and a lot of workplaces we can't eliminate or minimize the risks as easily as say a bank or uh, another um, office building for example because we have our front doors open to everybody that's part of our reason for being is to make sure that our libraries are accessible and open to everyone but when we open our doors to everyone we get all the stuff that's going on outside coming into our buildings into our libraries there's a I can't remember who wrote this but I remember reading somebody saying that if there's problems in society you will see them in the library because they will come through the door and the people will bring their problems with them. So it's really hard for us to actually eliminate or minimize the risks. Many, many libraries now are putting security guards on the door, but that doesn't necessarily solve the problem. It just means if the people can get past the security guard, they might be absolutely fine when they enter the library, but then they might not be once they've spent some time in the library, the security guard can then try and help get that person out but really the um the trauma of being part of that for a library staff member um, we can't really eliminate or minimize that as easily as a lot of workplaces can <clears throat> now one thing that we do in public libraries is incident reporting and incident reporting is a really nice way for us to demonstrate to our governing body which in Australia is generally the uh, local council so your local government council is to do incident reporting so every time something happens we write it up into an incident report and different libraries do this differently um, the places that I visited some libraries do it very very basically where they might just write um, you know incident occurred in children's area and that's it maybe note the time that it happened and there's really not much detail in there to understand what happened what happened afterwards who was involved what was the effect of what happened that's just not part of the incident reporting um, I've also been to libraries where the staff have been told not to log incidents because it takes too long and there are just so many incidents that they can't possibly stop and write an incident report for every single one of them so they don't bother doing any um, Often when a local council is looking at the incident reports of a library, they're actually subsumed into the whole council's incident reporting. So it's not always obvious what the story is coming out of the library because their, their incident reports are just wrapped up into the council ones and that loses their impact by being dispersed across the whole council reporting. <clears throat> there are some good things about incident reporting, of course, um, it does note what happened in most cases if it's done what done well um, it does indicate what time of day things might be at their worst and that might then help some decisions about where and when you put security guards if you're lucky enough to be given funding to do that so what can we do um, I think this is in Australia something that public library workers all recognize but it's not something that we're moving to address. And actually, when I delivered this presentation at the Australian Library and Information Association conference back in, I think it was June, May, no, April. Um, afterwards, so many people came up to me and said, everything you said in there, I've seen it. 
everything you said in there happens in my library every week. And it was overwhelming the number of people that came up and said, yeah, I understand what you said there. I see that too. <clears throat> so I think we need to acknowledge the reality and that's partly why I'm doing this presentation. I think as an educator, you know, library and information studies educator, so I'm part of a school that has a bachelor and a master's and a PhD looking at putting people into the library workforce as qualified librarians. We need to perhaps start looking at building some of that into the training and education that we give our students about the reality of public library work and some skills about how to do that, how to look after yourself to maintain your own well-being. Although I do have a problem with the whole idea of self-care as the answer, because even though I recognise it's important to look after yourself, I think if we say you can engage in some self-care is taking the responsibility away from the employer and putting it on to the individual to manage the situation. Whereas I think the onus to manage the situation belongs on the employer. It shouldn't be up to the, uh, the worker to then have to try and manage the trauma because of the workplace didn't take that responsibility. <coughs> we need to look about, excuse me, uh, looking at recruitment of library workers. Uh, somebody said we should be hiring barmaids because they're really good at managing uh, difficult behaviours. Maybe we need to look at um, training of our workers, like professional development, giving them some more skills. Although a lot of what I was told was, as, as one of the things I read to you was, you know, you can train and train and train, but unless you are faced with those situations regularly, then you forget the training or it's so stressful at the moment when it's happening that the training goes out of your head. So um, training maybe uh, is limited perhaps. More security guards is a possibility, but then of course we're reliant on um, our governing bodies to fund that. But I think, you know, incident reporting can lead to security guard being funded. It has, it has done in the past. And perhaps the change the way that we do the employee assistance program. So many people, um, like you know, I'd go to these libraries, right? And I'd sit there and I'd say to them, tell me about these things that have happened to you. And they would tell me and they would cry and they would say, it was terrible. I'm sorry, it's my fault. I'm sorry for getting upset. And I'd say, well, have you engaged in the EAP process? And oh, no, no, I don't do that because all sorts of reasons I was told. One reason I was told is that we're encouraged not to because it takes us out of the workplace and we're already tight with our rostering. Other people were so, oh, I don't want to do that because everybody will know and I don't want to be vulnerable in my job. All sorts of reasons why people aren't engaging with the EAP. And even people who have engaged with an EAP process, like gone to see a counsellor, they have reported back to me that, um, you know, you can only go five times or something and it's not really worth it. And, you know, I went one time and then the next time there was somebody else there offering the service. So there was no continuity of, I had to think I'd start again telling my story. And, you know, there were obviously some problems with, with that process as well. So maybe we need to look at the way we provide care to our workers. Now, I know a lot of people in Australia and elsewhere have done uh, training with Ryan Dowd, looking at uh, working with homeless communities in particular. This is an alternative to the Ryan Dowd suite of work. Um, Elizabeth Waller, Beth Waller and Sarah Johnson have written this great book creating a person-centred library. Um, this is, in fact, I've got a copy here. It is a really good book. And it does have a lot of stuff about how to deal with challenging situations and about trauma-informed work uh, with people that coming into your library. It also has a, uh, a chapter called Organisational Approaches for Best Supporting Staff. So um, if you're interested in how you can look after your staff better or how to um, approach the problems that you're having within your workplace in a different way, um, this book is terrific. Uh, I should disclose that Beth is a friend. So um, in uh, being open, that, uh, but regardless of being a friend with Beth, this is a fantastic book and uh, worth having a look at at least. The other thing we can do uh, as a uh, as a work within our workplace, as a, within a profession, is to look at other professions that are also 
working with the public in and in, I'm thinking like in a first responder way so when I think of first responders I'm thinking like a police fire ambulance these are people who are working with people in crisis but library workers are also working with people in crisis they're coming into our buildings and they are having an effect on the surroundings and the people within those buildings um, as demonstrated by all those things I read earlier so Maybe it's something that we can do as a profession is to look at other first responder professions to see how they're looking after their staff. Um, so, for example, Ambulance Victoria have got this website. Um, they have a mental health and wellbeing action plan with a whole bunch of stuff inside there that is talking about how they look after their staff because they are also experiences, experiencing a great deal of trauma through their work. So perhaps we can learn something from them. Um, likewise, the police have um, a lot of resources in place to look after their staff. You can see here there's uh, drop down lists at the bottom there. So you can click, you know, I'm a police officer, but you can also click other things like I'm a, um, I know all the different roles they have within the police. I'm located in Victoria, um, experiencing say, trauma. Then it'll take you through to a bunch of resources that are available to the police in Victoria who are experiencing trauma. And then they can engage with those processes themselves or even just do some reading. Um, so it's just a way of uh, sort of channeling people towards resources that might be helpful for them. Maybe that's something that we can do as a profession to provide um, better access to resources in this sort of way. Similarly, uh, the Country Fire Association, which is um, obviously working in really traumatic and stressful environments as well, they also have a website which is focusing on their health and well-being. So a really nice recognition that what you're doing is hard and here are some things that might help. And I think we could do that better as a profession as well in recognising that what we do is hard and uh, there are, might be some better ways that we can look after our staff and perhaps acknowledging the problem is the first step in that. So that's um, all from my presentation. Um, the only thing that I wanted to add was that in another study that I've done recently, I asked public library staff, are you considering leaving the profession? And just under 50%, 5-0% said yes. Because this job is so stressful and so unpleasant, it's not what I thought I was getting myself into. There's a very good chance that I will start looking for work soon, somewhere else. So that is a problem for our profession. If we're going to lose half of our workforce because of the stress of the workplace, then we've got a big problem. And that's something that I'm going to be working towards, trying to understand some more and see if we can put some things in place at a national level, at a state level and at a local level to make the workplace safer for our library staff. Thank you very much for listening. This is how you can find me if you would like. Um, I'm always very keen to talk to people about this topic or anything else that I'm working on. So thank you very much for listening. And I hope you have enjoyed this recording. Bye.